Hey friends, it's Melanie. Welcome to my kitchen. Today's what's for dinner. I've got three great meals for you that you're going to love. They're quick, they're easy, and they're delicious. This was one of those weeks where we just flew by the seat of our pants. I knew it was going to be a crazy week. I really hadn't done any meal planning and Thankfully, I keep a stocked freezer and a stocked pantry, and I was able to pull these together, even a brand new meal that I'd never made before. So sit back, relax, enjoy these what's for dinners, and I hope you get some dinner inspiration. The first meal I'm making is breakfast for dinner, and we're going to have some French toast, bacon, eggs, and sausage. I just had a little bit of everything kind of left over, and I put my bacon out on a aluminum foil line baking sheet, put it in the oven for about 15 or 20 minutes on 425 while I was frying my sausage up on top of the stove. Had some fresh strawberries, so rinsed those things off and got those ready just to eat on the side. Now I'm using this Pepperidge Farm strawberry swirl bread for French toast and it is delicious. I used about three eggs here. Into my eggs I poured probably, oh, a fourth to maybe a half a cup of milk put in some vanilla and cinnamon and give that a good whisk. I just about always have the ingredients to make breakfast. Sometimes I make it on the weekends, but a lot of times we like to have it for dinner and it's always something I can just pull out and go to. And this Pepperidge Farm bread, it just is something special. In the fall, they'll come out with the pumpkin one, and I always like to make French toast with that when it comes out. And you're just gonna soak your bread down in that egg mixture for a little bit. Now we're back over here, our sausage is about done. I think the hardest part of cooking breakfast is all the different pieces that you've got going on. I like to try to get everything done about the same time so everything's kind of hot. So you've got about four or five irons in the fire at the same time whenever you're cooking breakfast, but it's always worth it. So I've just melted some butter in my skillet and put in my first little batch of French toast, giving them a flip. Just cook them about three or four minutes on each side over about medium high heat. And they'll just get golden and just beautiful and perfect. Tastes real good. I'll link you a Pinterest pin down in the bottom of the description box from Pepperidge Farm and they give you a really nice strawberry sauce that you can make that goes with this. I didn't do that this night, but uh, they always have a little some extra on there. We're gonna have some scrambled eggs too. I just wanted to show you here, you're gonna see in a minute, but I have a shell that broke loose and got in my eggs and You know, when you get an eggshell in there, sometimes you chase it around with your finger and you can't get a hold of it. That's what's happening to me here. But if you will just take one side of the egg that you've broken, if you can just slide that in around it or right underneath of it, a lot of times it'll just like suction that eggshell right back into it and it comes out real easy. I fixed my husband's plate out for him and had him come over here and put his syrup over it, just sprinkled his toast with some powdered sugar, and he really goes to town. He likes syrup to cover pretty much everything except his eggs, looks like. And our next meal is going to be one everybody knows and loves, but hopefully I can show you just a little bit of something different. It's Pioneer Woman 
sloppy joes of course i'm gonna have her recipe but i will have the original one linked down in the description box for you i used about a pound of meat and brown sugar bell peppers garlic chili powder i used tomato paste and some water ketchup mustard and worcestershire sauce and some onions And I eyeball a lot of my measurements. I do loosely go by the recipe. I don't put everything in there that she puts. I'm not big on red pepper flakes or anything too spicy, but that's the good thing about this. You can just doctor it up however your family like. I sliced up about half of this onion. You want to make sure you get your ground beef all cooked up, cooked thoroughly, and then drain any grease that you have off of it. And I'm using frozen bell peppers, the onions and the bell pepper in my meat, and let that get softened up and cooked down a little bit with that. And if I'd had frozen onions, I probably would have used them too. I'm gonna use about a cup of ketchup here. Then I'll just run a little bit of water in that, probably about half a cup of water into that little measuring cup and put that in here in a little bit. I just use, oh, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon of mustard, teaspoon there of garlic, that probably equals a clove or two. Then I'll put in a couple good sized teaspoonfuls of chili powder. I'm supposed to use about two tablespoons of brown sugar, but I was towards the end of that bag and I just went ahead and put it in. My husband, he loves the flavor of that dark brown sugar in there. And then I used pretty good heaping tablespoonful of tomato paste in mine too. I'll come back here in just a little bit and Douse in some of that Worcestershire sauce and some salt and pepper, and you're just gonna let that simmer. The longer it simmers, the better it tastes. Plate that up on some hamburger buns. I did not even take the time to toast these buns tonight. I mean, we were just in a hurry this week. Throw some french fries out there on the side, and this was a good, hearty meal that it's yummy, it's quick, it's easy, everybody loves it. And it's getting hot down here already in the south, so we just needed a good, cold, refreshing glass of sweet iced tea. The third dish that I made this week is a rendition of chicken pot pie and it's called a chicken pot pie braid and we absolutely love this thing. Now you're gonna see me, I'm prepping some chicken here. First thing I like to do is to spray my crock pot so it won't stick and I had a couple of bags of frozen chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and cook that from frozen, put in salt and pepper. I'm gonna sprinkle garlic powder and onion powder on there. And then I'm gonna throw in probably half a stick of butter on top of that. I'm not gonna add any water to this because those chicken breasts are frozen and the water will come as those cook out. I go ahead and season it up when it's frozen like that and all those good seasonings just cook down into that. probably about a cup of your cooked up chicken and then about a cup of mixed veggies. Mine were frozen and you don't have to cook them. You just put them right in there frozen. Gonna add in about a half a cup of cheddar cheese. 
and four ounces of cream cheese. And you wanna make sure that your cream cheese is good and soft so that it will mix up easily in there. About a half a cup of cream of chicken soup. And I probably used a little more than a half a cup of soup. And here I am, you're gonna assemble this braid. And I apologize, my footage is turned the wrong direction, the very most important part of this recipe, and we had the camera turned the wrong way. But anyway, you're gonna take one can of your crescents and you're just gonna lay them out and they overlap a little bit, but you're just gonna make a long rectangle out of one can, and that's gonna be the bottom of your braid. So you wanna push it together um, at any of the seams and seal it up. And then you're gonna take your second row of crescents and the triangles you're just going to put the straight end right along the edges of the rectangle you've made and you're going to do four crescents on each side with the points facing out Of course, one of them had to tear all up. I just had to piece it together the best I could, but it tastes fine. It was still pretty. It just gave it a little rustic presentation. So now you're gonna take this chicken pot pie filling and you're just gonna spoon that all down the middle of this crescent roll. Once you get all of your filling in there and spread out a little bit, you're just going to take each of the points of your crescent and cross it over the top and across to the other side, crisscrossing from side to side as you go, just to give it a pretty braided look. And you will still see some of your chicken mixture in between, but that's okay. It's supposed to be like that. It just actually makes the dish look even prettier when it's all baked up. And I took the ends of mine and I would pull up the very bottom of that crescent sheet and try to, you know, best as I could seal that up. And then you're going to bake this, I think it was about 15 or 20 minutes. Again, I will link you the recipe down in the description box. And it bakes at 375. And it gets so pretty and brown. And you can see your vegetables and your chicken and cheese on the inside. This was so good. And the crescents I used were butter flavor. And that buttery crescent just really added to it. But this was so flavorful and juicy, and the cream cheese just gave it a little, just a hint of some kind of twang to it, and uh, we just loved this. I'll definitely be making this again. You can see how yummy that is. I served this with a big um, mixed green and red leaf lettuce salad. It was so good. And then I just decided on the fly to throw in one more recipe. Well, it's not really a recipe. One more meal that we had this week. Like I said, we were just flying by the seat of our pants this week. And this is an Insta story that I shared this week where I just took some stuff out of my pantry and out of my freezer. And this was honestly one of the best dishes we had this week. The only thing I had to cook was this cornbread right here. 
Everything else was either canned or frozen. We had some Gordon's fish fillets that I pulled out of the freezer and we had this cornbread and I served up some Lux canned pinto beans and some of those good Margaret Holmes greens. And I forgot, I made a little tartar sauce. So that's all I had to do that night was make a little cornbread and some tartar sauce. But I hope you've enjoyed this week's What's for Dinner. If you did, give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite meal was. Um, if you try any of these, be sure and give me a shout back. Check my description box for links to all the recipes and lots of other nice things I always put down there for you. Again, I appreciate you watching. Life is hard, but dinner does not always have to be. Be sure if you like this video to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and until I see you next week in another What's for Dinner, I send you love from my kitchen. I'll see you next week.